He is the, uh, he works for Video Labs in Rockville, Maryland. He's going to go through some marketing on DVDs. Uh, got a whole evening for, uh, set up for us, also some um, door prize giveaways. So if you haven't given uh, your green card or your card in the green, uh, Oh, you green green, give me a green card. card. Green card. Green card. Green card. Green Money. Uh, Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, we are illegal. We're illegal. We don't have our work. You don't have your green card, so uh, then uh, we won't say anything. Uh, yeah, right. But Dave's going to go through a lot of uh, what he does in the manufacturing of DVDs, replication, uh, what it takes, what the services are, what he offers, and how to do the marketing and so forth. Yeah, yeah you've touched you've touched on everything. Considering uh, nice you know, uh, no, you didn't. Stephen gave me about the uh, fifteen seconds worth of uh, here's what to do. So I have fifteen seconds of fame. That's there you go. <laughs> David, thank you for coming. My pleasure. Tonight. My pleasure. And we'll turn it over to you, and the floor is yours. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank Hello. you, Steve. Um, hi, Abby. Abby was the one who recorded a session that I did with Tiva back in January. Yes. We're going to sort of talk about some similar stuff again. And I've sort of built on that. So it, it oh, good. yeah, yeah, it was an online marketing, so yeah. Um, again, David Ryan, Video Labs. Uh, I wear two hats at Video Labs. I wear a management hat. I recently got promoted to being Director of Production Services, all right? Mm. Yes, yeah, so, so, so I do good. that. But I gotta tell you, my true love, and what I, I've been at Video Labs for four years, my true love, is sales and marketing, all right? That, that, that's what I love doing. And um, it has really been a transform. I'm not going to wear this the whole time. I know Steve's back there wondering if I'm going to wear this the whole time. No. Um, the, what I want to talk about tonight is, is uh, two things. That, and, and again, when I speak, it's, I don't want to talk so much about me. I want to make it about you, all right? And I know we are all in this I want you to be able to leave here with some important information that's going to help you in this tough economy. That's what I've come to talk about. And so we're going to talk about media replication options. Again, what we do, and I'll, I'll go to the next one in a moment here with my elevator speech. But basically, we're going to talk about media replication options, how I can help you in this crazy economy, and then also and then the second half, I'm going to talk about online marketing strategies. Cost effective, cost efficient marketing. This is a strategy that I've worked. I know everyone talks about online marketing and how you need to do it. But it's, it's, it's really worked for me. It's been a process that I've worked for the past four years, and it's been a transformative process really for me. Really, I don't mean to be evangelical here or anything like that, or Tony Robbins or whatever. The point is, that it has really worked for me. And I will say this up front, I will say this, that given this economy, and given where I entered in into the sales team, et cetera, et cetera, that my online marketing strategies are what's keeping me in the game. It's why I'm still in business, and why a lot of our competitors have closed, I'm still in the game. Am I having tough times like you guys? Yes. Is it challenging? Yes. But I keep having a lot of fun and the reason why I'm still in the game, I can tell you, for me, it works for me, is my online marketing strategies. All right? So, let's move on. Okay, this is my elevator speech, right? Every salesperson has to have an elevator speech, but it just, this is when people go, Video Labs, what's that? I've actually had people, when I meet them, actually in an elevator, oh, Video Labs, do you do like uh, radiology? Or right? stuff like that. No, 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 no. So, I work with people whose job is to get the message out, all right? And what I provide is media replication, that's CDs, DVDs, and videotape, and related multimedia services, all right? And here's an example of a, we were talking over dinner of a, a client that I'm currently working with. Uh, they've got like a 40th anniversary uh, convention coming up down in Orlando. They asked all their affiliates to send in media. They wanted to make a disc and have a disc of 40 years, remembrances, et cetera, et cetera, that they could hand out when people signed in on Sunday afternoon. All right? So everyone sent us their camcorder tapes. You can imagine what we got from all the affiliates. Put it all together onto an author DVD, right? And then 
We made uh, the packaging, 4,000 copies, got them down to Orlando. That's, that's a prime example of what we do, all right? And I'm going to go down through a whole laundry list of things uh, of, of what we can also honor. I say laundry list because I'm taking this marketing course now, you know, where they sort of say, don't use point, you know, don't use in your PowerPoint, try to stay away from bullets. Well, you're going to get some bullets, all right, of the services, how we can help you. But that is the core, really. That sort of is an example of what we do at Video Labs. All right. With that said, now, I'm going to, just to clarify things, I'm going to throw out three websites to you tonight. And I just want to just so lay sort of the groundwork of what you're going to hear so you don't get too confused. Video Labs, all right, and let's see, there we go. Whoops, nope, it went back. Sorry. That's right. Videolabs.net, all right, that's the company that I work for. That's the person, that's the team. You know, a company that I'm the sales and marketing team member with. Steven, should I close this door? What? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to talk about my added value. And this is where we'll talk about the, uh, and you're going to see me refer to it, my added value <coughs> resource website blog. All right? It's just for my clients. It's aimed for my, it's my own little thing that I set up. And it feeds in, it, it complements videolabs.net, all right? So it's, it's my own marketing. And that's where I've been doing my tweaking, my, my experimenting, my developing of my online marketing strategy. And then there's online media workshops, which I've started, and we're going to Skype in a part, uh, uh, my partner on that. Uh, it's a side venture. Uh, we actually uh, are working with Video Labs as well, but just so you know, I'm online media workshops. I'm working with a woman named Leslie Reeves, a uh, website design specialist in multimedia, uh, excellent multimedia par excellence, uh, multimedia expert. She has her own company. We formed this one company called uh, Online Media Workshops. And am I here to sell something? Yes, video lab services, et cetera. And I am also selling an ebook that I've just released about two weeks ago. Leslie helped me write it. And so am I here, you know, huckstering a ebook? Yeah, but I think you're going to want to get it because I think it, it really is aimed for you guys, sole proprietors, how to do cost efficiently, cost effectively, um, co I mean cost efficiently and very effectively do marketing. And, and, and I lay out my strategy that I'm going to talk about more. Uh, but in this ebook, I lay it from A to Z. It's an easy read, and a lot of people you'll see articles about how people you know say, "Well, do with Twitter you do this, or LinkedIn you do this, right? and or Facebook you do this, or easy articles you do this, or with your website you do this." What I've learned is I've sort of taken everybody's input and done my own experiments, my own tweaking over the past four years, and developed a, a system where it's all in sync, how it's not just when it's, it, it, you're not just flailing around in the internet, it's just basically getting the whole marketing process to work, the whole online marketing process. It's really worked for me and I don't, I'll just reiterate one last time, it's why I'm still in the game. I'm convinced of it. All right. Now what challenges are you guys facing? We talked to some of the, who I was with dinner with, we talked some of it. So I'm going to ask some of the folks who weren't with us at dinner. Ken, what are some of the challenges that you're facing that you, in this economy that you didn't face, let's say, in, in 2007, 2006? What's new? More people are just price shopping and uh, they just, the last thing they want to do is pay for anything. Okay. Price shopping. <coughs> Everyone agree? All right. What else is going on? They think they can do it themselves or can be part of it and they probably can, so you have to figure out what part can't they do that you could do right. and help them with it or fix up what they messed up. Right, so, so the idea that, that they think they can do it themselves, so we got a combination, but they want to do it for low price and they already th and they don't add much, have much, don't want to place much value in the service because they think they can do it themselves. Would that be accurate? Yes. All right, anything else that's going on? What challenges are you facing that's different than maybe three years ago? 
technology is changing. Yeah, technology. Uh, here, you know, I'm, I'm doing my thinking of this. I, I, every day I'm sort of coming up with it, you know, wrapping my head around this issue. What's going on? How do we, you know, as a salesperson, this is, you know, this is my livelihood. How am I going? You know, I have to analyze what's going on to best decide the best strategy how to move on. So uh, this is my take on it as of today. Okay, I mean, next week it could be different. But see if you, if you agree with me on some of the takes here. Um, I, think we're, I think the media field right now, we're going through an unprecedented change, much like, like uh, the electricity uh, industry in the 1890s, uh, cars in the 20s, personal computers maybe in the, in the 80s, right? Uh, I think we're going through now. And historically, if you look at the, from 2000 with the tech bust, and then you know, everyone says, oh, it's all over, all over. And then sure enough, wasn't it just, just within the past year, or back the, let me back up. They said, oh, we have so much fiber, we have enough fiber to go to the moon and back, and you know, several times, so we're never gonna need fiber again. And then, wasn't it this past year, they were saying, well, you know, we need more fiber right now. And th that has happened <coughs> in, if you go back and study economic history, that is a cycle that it repeats itself over and over again. So I think that we are, in, there's a big rise, there's a bust, a lag, a lull, shall I say, and then we start over again, and then we really start taking advantage. And I think we're in that watershed period now in the communications field. This is my thinking. I mean, it's, it's, again, I don't pr pretend to be a, a prophet or, or a great you know, analyst or Ivy League analyst, but this is my take on it, that as we see with the newspaper industry, we see it, it's in the whole communications. This is, we're in that time where a lot of things are changing at a dramatic rate. So just keeping up with it. And here's a, my take on it. For example, if you, uh, we were talking, I went to a seminar and the key pro, let's see if I can get to it. You guys know this, some of you guys may be familiar with where you can, this great, I, this is the high tech part of it that it, this is so, it's available to videographers such as yourself and the potential that it offers in its ability as a box, as a recorder to just do conversions right there in the field and the storage and the ability for playback and, and doing uh, down converts, et cetera, et cetera, and then be able to put it right into the final cut and just go. I mean, <coughs> pretty mind blowing. And, and I, you guys are probably seeing this. If, if anyone is at the forefront of seeing the newest, latest high tech stuff, you guys are it for sure. So I'm not really telling you anything new, but to me this strikes, this is the one end of it, but then on the other end, um, who went to NAB? Anyone? Okay, uh, I didn't want to, no, I don't want to do that. So I'm cancel this. The, um, on the other end, I went to, a, I haven't been to NAB myself. I've been to maybe one Las Vegas conference in my whole career. But what's cool now is you can get all these webinars right from the floor. You know, so it's almost, I, you know, so it's almost like being there. And then I went to a, a TIVA event where they had several folks who went and came back and spoke. And that was very enlightening. And one of the things that people talked about was this product. Now, you guys, you guys know about the GoPro? This thing is totally cool. This was introduced at NAB. It's a mountable, I hope my, uh, the internet's gonna get me there. This thing is a hog as far as their, their site is. But anyway, it's a mountable, small little mountable HD camera. Have you seen it? Have you heard about it? Who's got one? Anyone? No. It, That's what he's using, right? yeah. it, it is, in fact, what they do here on their site, um, if this comes out, I'll keep talking. We're not going to wait for it. But it's the camera about this big. And one of their demo videos, did you see it, is a pipeline. A guy they put on the end of a surfboard. And the guy does a full pipeline with it shooting up at him. And it is just totally cool. And uh, they have some, well, it's going to be, you know, it's going to take a while to get there. But the, uh, uh, the point, you know how much these things cost? Any, any other price? 
300 bucks. And at the show, all right, we'll stop this, enough of that. Um, the, um, at the show, they were selling them the, 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 for $200. And guess what, of course, it's a showstopper. There's a line out to the street because everyone knew I can make 50% profit on these, and they're the coolest items. So people just walked into ready cash, bought up all these $200 uh, GoPros and took them home. And so what? it's a great, cool product. That, the, that to me is what we're facing on the other end, right? That is what I call the democratization of media, all right? And where I first learned that term democratization, to show you where I'm coming from, is I first heard that term when I was working for the AFL-CIO in a convention and they were celebrating Lech Wałęsa's uh, the, the downfall of the Iron Curtain. And you know, everyone has a theory about why the uh, you know, Soviet bloc fell down. Well, certainly there is, I mean, my sister-in-law thinks that the Pope, you know, or, or, you know, and he may have he certainly had a role to do with it. Uh, I got a niece who thinks it was rock and roll who brought down the, you know, the communist bloc. Um, there is certainly proof that this happened, that one of the reasons of the downfall was democratization of the video, and Lech Wałęsa himself said this, that the underground videos, they'd made VHS copy after VHS copy after VHS copy of underground um, rally and democratization movie, you know, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, freedom uh, videos. And so before the web, before DVDs, before that, they had little, down in the basement in Poland, they were making copy after copy, generation after generation, of de and, real and that's how they got the message out. He said that was a network, of that how we got our instructions out past the police, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, look where we've come, and we were talking at, uh, we were talking at dinner about how, you know, you used to be able to go to a, a party, uh, and I work at the television station. Ooh, yeah, cool, you know, now it's, I work in media, and you guys face it. Oh yeah, well you know in my basement, my son's got this thing set up, you know, and he's doing our family archives. And do you think you can come on over and take a look? And by the way, what film school should he or she go? To? Yeah, we all, you all know that, right? So, so true, we're facing the democratization. I'm not saying it's a bad thing because it doesn't matter if it's bad or good. You can't fight it, all right? So you have to find a way to add value it. We're also facing with, aren't we also facing the diversification of deliverables? person's got a small budget, Abby was talking about the budget's smaller, but now it used to be, you know, video labs back in the 90s would make, this month we made 30,000 VHSs, let's next month make 40,000 VHSs, let's make 50,000 VHSs, it's a great model, but today I need, oh, I need DVDs, I need the CDs, oh, we need, uh, we're going to buy some uh, online ad space, uh, we're going to do, you know, maybe we'll buy a little an ad in the post. Maybe we'll do this. It, the point being that the, the the spending, the communications budget, because the economy is shrinking, and still the pie is being cut up more. So that if you when you used to be working for a television station, you know, you get the video money. Now it's it's going out. It goes to the web. It goes to the web designer. It goes to the multimedia specialist. It goes, it goes, and you know, pretty soon you're getting this, this, this. So am I, am I hitting a, this is some of what we're facing here, all right? And finally, so that's a whammy that we're getting regardless of this economy. We've been getting it because of technology changes, and then the economy comes along and just hits us in the forehead. It's tougher to get leads, tougher to get prospects, tougher to get clients, right? Pricing pressure, Abby was talking about that. And of course, collections. Everybody's paying everybody late, right? Welcome, guys. Hey, hey, how you doing? Grab a seat. Sorry, running the track. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, the, uh, the collections. I mean, everybody is paying everybody late, and they think, "Well, I'm your payload," and it just sort of. So we're all facing that. And if you don't have a ready cash flow or reserves, that's a challenge. We are facing <coughs> some unprecedented changes in the technology, and then we get hit with this economy. All right, I'm facing it too, so what are you going to do? All right, what are we going to do? Um, I boil it down to two things, and that's what I want to talk about tonight and how I can help you guys in this. Is you got to be more cost efficient and nimble in your operations. I got to do it. 
We talked about how you got to try to make your staff more productive. You got to find ways to just make yourself more efficient and more, more profitable in the operations. And then you have to be more effective in the marketing. All right, and that's the ways that I want to talk about tonight. We're in agreement. I'm in the same boat as you guys are. This is where it comes down to. You've got to find a way to be more efficient for yourself and then a way to get out there and market more and market more effectively. All right, how can video labs help you? All right. Um, again, I said we were, you know, media replication and related multimedia. So, right, here's the whole spectrum of a project. We basically fit in right around here, right? We're at that part of the, the, uh, the spectrum. We're having to be more nimble. We're not just doing that anymore. We do a little bit of post. We actually do, I'm going to go down my laundry list in just a second. We do, you know what? I have a pointer. I should probably use it, shouldn't I? Doo -doo -doo. I have to get batteries for it. Look at that. Cool. See? Technology. Um, so anyway, you know, we've been around here. That After you finish with your project, then what are you going to do with it? We have to do with it. We then, our job has been to help determine the deliverables, right, for a project. Well, so we're around here, but we're starting to do post. We're starting to do a little production. Uh, we actually, within that leads into pre-production. Are we competing against some of the bigger houses in that production area? Are we competing against the bigger producers? No, but clients, when they're, we're doing this, they're asking, well, I've got this medium. Remember we talked about the diversity of deliverables that are out there. We're having to help them talk that through and then by the way, so it used to be we made you 40,000 VHSs. Today it's, we'll make you 40,000 DVDs. Plus, what else do you need? You need your web movies? We'll make that. Do you need captions? We'll do that. All right, so let me go down the laundry list after this. Oh, it works. 30 seconds. Bear with me. where I played that back from, YouTube, right? Yeah. So um, again, that, as you saw the number of things that went across the screen, that is how we've expanded. It's not just doing copies anymore. We're having to do the copies, a lot of multimedia. We were talking to dinner how we're doing a lot of H.264s. We're doing a lot of subtitling, a lot of captioning, uh, a lot of DVD authoring, as I was talking about earlier. So it's not just making copies. Uh, and that's how we've had to learn to expand and be nimble and move on. Uh, let me go to the next screen. And look, I can even offer you guys a green screen insert space. I'm not even going to call it an insert studio or insert stage. If you're stuck, I know you have the various options, but I know uh, if you need, if you get stuck and you need a space to shoot a day of green screen, give me a call. I can make it happen. We got a space. We've done a shoot there. We've done some. Uh, stand-ups in front of it. So I got an air-conditioned area that uh, you can have, all right? So it's just so you know. So I mean, we've even gotten into a little production there. We've actually done production. Uh, Ken Dave Tierney actually did a, a, a job with, where we did an, an infomercial for a, a golf, infomercial for a golf product. And so we're getting into, we actually produced it, wrote it and produced it. So we're, you can see everyone and, you, and people would say, Video Labs, you're doing that? Yeah, that's what we have to do. Uh, I mean, not, I don't mean it that way, but that's what we're having to do is think of creative ways to expand our reach and to, get, and to be nimble in our business model. Uh, some things for you. Uh, time code window burns. I don't know if I do it a lot for a lot of the ESPN camera guys got to uh, leave with, um, got to get quick turns on their window burns. So I'll do them to DVDs. If you want them on VHS, I can do that too. But I do real quick, especially if they're shooting like DVC Pro or HD Cam or whatever, give it to me. I'll do a down convert, letterbox it, put it in, you know. I do that quick turn. 
like uh, in a day, all right? So you can get um, inner format dubbing, including down converts to HDV, HD. I do that a lot. Uh, I get a lot of down converts for folks. Um, uh, making anamorphic, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm talking about. Standards conversion. Um, I have the Alchemist PHC, which for SD, I do not have it for HD, but I have it for SD, and that's the top of the line of anyone know that uh, top of the line standards conversion, PAL, NTSC, back and forth. We still get, you know, a fair amount of that um, coming from uh, particularly like, uh, uh, you know, yeah, England. We get a lot of work with England. Uh, we have Final Cut Pro. I know you guys got Final Cut Pro. and everything. We find it, we like it a lot because, I, mean, I know there's, I don't want to enter the debate on that, but we just like it, we just like it because it's very versatile. And we use it, as you can see, for getting into authoring, et cetera. It's a real engine. It's a real versatile engine. It's a, it's a way to get things in and then get it off to our, uh, to our encoders uh, if we're going to do uh, authoring or whatever. So we just find it as a great, great uh, input, in, ingestion, shall we say. And then we'll edit with it as I was giving some examples of it. Uh, here's one thing that we do a lot of, and, and if you, you get in a situation, I, I get, I have a number of clients that are just like you who call me up to do outputs to tape. They've got the Final Cut Pro, and then they, let's say it's a film uh, festival, and the film festival says, I gotta have it on D beta, or I gotta have it on an HD cam, or, and they're going, you know, I've got it here in my computer, how am I gonna, you know, and they don't wanna rent a deck, so they just send me a hard drive. I have a client from Texas who just found me on the net, sends me, you know, overnights the drive, put it in, get a tape, I'll send it. I have several clients who are entering like um, uh, international film festivals and so they not only, uh, then there's an SD and we got to then convert it to a PAL. So that if you're in the box and you got to get it to tape or got to get it out to something or you got to make a lot of copies of it, give me a call. That's one way I can really help you out. So I, I can pro, I will always be running a deck. Let's put it that way, all right? and I'll save you the hassle of having to rent the deck. Um, compressions, you know, we were talking earlier about H.264s, we'll do that. We do captioning and subtitling if you need for those compressions as well. As well. Um, so we can do any flavor. Just tell us what the flavor of the specs that you want and we can make that happen. As you can tell, that's often an add-on by my clients. Oh, by the way, while you're making the disc, can you make me a da 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 That's what we do. Um, Disc authoring, disc duplication and replication, caption subtitles I was talking about, packaging and fulfillment, we do that as well. Uh, if you've got, you know, if you're lucky to score a big, uh, you know, you a huge, got a, a thousand mailers out that you gotta do, I'm the place to can take. You give me an Excel sheet, I'll take care of all the mailing and packaging for you, out it goes. Um, but I did wanna talk about, and, and digress for a second about disc authoring including what I say simple Blu-ray. Now again, uh, but I, um, these, this is probably our forte in, of what we do. All right, this is what we're known for today. In the 90s, we were VHS. Uh, today, people know us really for our disc authoring and our disc duplication and replication. And I put in there including simple Blu-ray. I can author a simple Blu-ray for you. Now again, it's not the Blu-ray with the three levels of of uh, uh, security, uh, it's not a replicated Blu-ray, that's a whole nother ball game. That is not entered our market yet. Uh, that is LA, New York, the studios. The price to enter into considering Blu-ray is totally prohibitive for anyone except very deep pockets. Uh, if you wanna learn more about Blu-ray, this is my Bible. Uh, I saw a seminar with these guys uh, Blu-ray disc demystified. They all, you might have seen their book, the previous generation was DVD demystified. This is everything you want to know. I go to it all the time and explains the whole craziness. I say craziness because it takes, it, it, when you author a true project for Blu-ray and you can talk to folks at Discovery or Nat Geo, they, it's very intensive. It takes months because it, it, it just, it's at a point where it, it, the, the flow charts that are in this book about what goes on is it's very, you don't rush through it. It's not a rush process. Very powerful when the end, 
So what I'm getting to is, however, let's say you want a Blu-ray. Let's say your client says, I want this on Blu-ray and I want to have a menu with it. I can do that. I can make you because we, we can then, I can make you the Blu-ray. I don't want to go through the whole thing with the, the files, but we, I can make you a, a simple, you know, with a menu that you can click and get to your Blu-ray uh, clips. And, and then I have Blu-ray duplication. Any, everyone clear on what the difference between duplication and replication is? Let me just digress for a second, if you don't, all right? Um, <coughs> the, uh, I'm with, or disc authoring, um, everyone's clear what a we talked about what the author disc is. That term is basically a navigable disc is another way to explain it. You know, it's what you get where you get a menu, a splash screen comes up and you get to click through and work your way through disc. We can do it on CDs, you're familiar with that. We use primarily Macromedia Director, all right? I'm sure you all are familiar with that uh, for our CDs. Uh, for DVDs, uh, we can do Studio Pro. We just choose to use Adobe Encore, and our high end is the Sonic Sonarist. Uh, the Sonic, uh, it just, this is for our real high end projects. Again, these are SD, all right? Um, but then for the uh, Encore and the Sonic Sonaris. But with the Blu-ray, again, we can make, go right from the Final Cut Pro, get it into the Encore. We use Encore to, to do the authoring, make a menu. It does not have, it's not like the Blu-rays you're buying from the store where, you, where it's all security and it's not BD Live with it being able to go to the internet. It's not that. But at least when the person clicks it and plays it in their Blu-ray machine, you, they are getting Blu-ray video. So if, you, if that's something that appeals to you, and where, let me give an example of when that, when that works. Um, annual meeting in a room, boardroom, producer says, I need this video to really shine. You know, I, I need to blow them out of their seats, all right? I know you can do 16.9 uh, widescreen with a DVD and take, but I shot this with Blu-ray Man, and you know it's it's down to Cape Canaveral. The, sh the rocket's going up. It's just beautiful. You got, and I need to, I need to get funded again, and I need to get these board of directors out of the seats. And this video is going to do it. You got to give me Blu-ray, and I need ten of those copies, or I need a hundred. I need to give each one of them something they can take back home. Okay, so all of a sudden, it's not a replication project, right? So we don't have to worry about it being having to worry about this whole. Uh, the three layers of, secure, uh, of, of encryption, um, I can do that, and I can do that for you. So if that's something that's in, uh, in, in, in your list, of, uh, if a client starts talking to you about that, give me a call, I can make that happen, and I can make you 100 copies, easy, of that duplicated Blu-ray, all right? Now, what I generally is happening, when people they'll want, they go and they get all disappointed, oh, I shot my video in 16.9, and I want to make 1,000 DVDs, and I want to send it out. I wanted to make a thousand Blu-rays that I could send out to, to all my clients. Here. And I go, well, we re you really. Once I start talking price, I've yet, yet to sell a replicated Blu-ray job because it's easily five times, five, six, up to ten times more than a replicated DVD product. What we usually talk them into, and they, and it works fine. Maybe the technology, you know, give us a few more years. Where we're at is if a person wants wants widescreen video, we'll take the HD, we'll make it, we'll get, we'll put it then anamorphic and get it and then work with it anamorphic onto the DVD, we'll make it widescreen so that when it plays back at least it's full screen 16.9 but it's SD and then we'll just go through the regular DVD process. So that's what we're making. Most of my clients are going for that. All right, so they're still sh so they're all shooting primarily 16.9 HD, just like you guys are. But that's really what's happening. And to help you g get through that, uh, with the whole letterbox, the anamorphic, trying to get people. You guys understand that. You know, you can imagine that. And I have that's where blogs come in, and uh, so I can point them to the uh, to the internet and say, all right, this is what I'm talking about. Because when you talk about anamorphic and things like that, it's crazy. It can get a little bit crazy, but. This is a, one of our strongest fortes, the authoring. And then with that, I can add features. With the authoring, if you want to do a DVD-9, double layer, 
you got, we got to do authoring. I got to split it up into DLTs to send it off to the plant. Um, see, we, I can add CSS encryption if you want. And again, this is for regular standard DVDs. All right, what that does is just, uh, sure enough, you can go onto the internet and you can find quick enough people who can say DSSS, find a way around it. But CSS is this encryption that we offer to protect the DVDs. Uh, we can prep, as I said, prep you for DVD-9. <coughs> Uh, the differences between disk duplication and di replication, duplication is burning, all right? I just got a lot of towers. It's the same way you make your DVDs and your computers. I just got a lot of towers, all right? So I can make a lot at once. Uh, I also have towers for Blu-ray too, so that's how I do the duplication. I come down here because look what, what you might have seen this as we've been going through the slides. And this is what I do. This is my blog. And so instead of glazing over on the other side of the phone, the courier said, what's the difference between duplication and replication and doing that for 10 times a day? While they're on the phone with me, almost everyone's on the computer, I have them go to my blog. And I've written a blog about the differences between disk duplication and disk replication. And I put them on hold while I'm getting some pricing and things like that. And I come back, they're up to speed on it. And look what's happened. It's become an interchange. They see me that because they go to my site, they see my site, they see me. From a marketing standpoint, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, you see what, how a blog starts the connection. It makes me stand out from the other 15 calls that they've made during the day. All right? So that's, the, that's what I'm doing with my blogs, helping answer questions that I seem to repeat a lot. And I don't mind repeating, but it really seems to help both sides, me and them, when I can get them to a blog with the information. All right, uh, so that's disk duplication. Disk replication is an actual, you need a minimum order of 1,000, all right, really, to consider this. Uh, it's, we work with a couple of partners. One is actually, uh, this one, I visited the plant uh, last winter out in Wisconsin. I work with them every day. This is where we get our, it, it's a huge manufacturing plant, all right? And what's, what happens, is what's different from disk from burning is uh, polycarbonate, you actually molten polycarbonate gets put into a press and there's a stamper here and ka -chung, ka -chung, ka -chung, ka -chung, you know, like anyone like the old vinyls, the old vinyl C or album, album records, it's the same sort of thing going in there, chum, 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 and out comes your DVD. Um, so that's replication. We're at the price point these days where if you're considering 500 di DVDs, 500 DVDs, I can actually do 1,000 replicated cheaper than 500 duplicated. Let me say that again. I can do 1,000, even with the shipping, I can get you 1,000 discs cheaper than 500 discs duplicated. So the, price, so the point, if you're in that range of 400 to 500, we should start talking about replicating. All right, disk space printing. This is where I can really uh, I offer a service to you. I know you're, you're probably doing disk printing yourselves, right? And, and you're using, you've got your own system and you're doing several copies there. It's when you get the 100 copies, all right? And I imagine you get that one. So, how, you know, I get the calls from videographers and independent producers. Look, I'm set up to do 50, but, you know, I got to do some other stuff here. And it's also, it's inkjet, and da, 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 da. We, that's the time to call me, all right? Because we do therm disk space printing. This is where we really stand out. Um, we do, with our dip duplication, we do what's called thermal transfer printing. And if you look, what did I do with my pointer? I brought some samples along as well here, too. Um, actually, this was done by Kath, uh, Kathy Cook, a professor up at UMBC one of her independent fields. Uh, these are duplicated, digital print packaging, but on the disk face, we actually do thermal transfer printing. And I'm gonna walk around and show you. The advantage of it is, right there. That's a glossy surface. Yep, and Beautiful. some clients really, they almost prefer this over what, we, what the replicated plants do. We can do some very nice printing here. And what I'm saying is, 
If you're in a position where you've got a hundred, yeah, sure. If you've got a hundred DVDs and you're trying to do it on your inkjet printer, you probably should give me a call. All right, and I can I can save you money and I can save you time. Um, the other thing is with this, the other thing with this is it's waterproof. All right, the inkjets, you know, and you don't want to put stomp on labels on DVDs. All right, because it's too sensitive to the centrifugal force. So if any little error, all right. You can do it with CDs, but we really don't advise you to do that with DVDs. So, all right, so that you get that. So you can really get high quality and the racks we did digitally in-house, all right? So, I mean, it's not offset. It's not a silk screen, but pretty good. Now, once you get into replication, you do get some other choices. You do get silk screen or you get offset. Um, don't want to turn this totally into a printing class necessarily, but if you have this is offset. If you, if you offset, it is silk screen is like with the t-shirts, you know, the silk, the screen, one color at a time. So offset is using etchings on uh, etched plates and films. If you, what it basically boils down to is if this is offset. And this is a replicated disc. So that if you've got a photograph, if you've got skin tones involved, you want to do offset printing. And this is where you want to talk to someone like me, because this is the expertise I bring to help you decide what's the best printing way to go. And I, of course, I refer, you know, I, I consult with experts at the plant. But this helps us before you come in with your design, talk with us if you have that opportunity. So we can help, help you optimize uh, your design to take advantage of one of the processes. The um, other one that I've got um, here, whoops, it's in my bag. Uh, where did it go, where did it go, where did it go? Had it, my box. Oh, there it is. Where are you? Here it is. This, I think is one of the, this is a silk screen disc. And this is by um, a, uh, this is a client of mine, uh, a music group, rock band, a couple of guys, uh, three guys with Russian heritage. And there, um, this is silk screen. Now, what is the difference? You see, you're able to get areas of large blocks of color. And this is when you can start using, you familiar with the term PMS or uh, PMS colors or uh, Pantone colors. This is in silk screen process. You can start taking. So if the person says it needs to be Coke red, then we can make it Coke red. I can't do that in offset, but I can or thermal transfer. But I can do it with a silk screen. But look at that. In fact, the the, the graphics folks at the plants who see you know hundreds of discs, uh, you know every week, call me up and say. Who is this guy? Who designed this? Well, it turns out to be a 17-year-old member of the band who did it. And uh, they were very blown away by the design. That is a tough print. And it really came out well. Again, that is silkscreen. Now, again, that's a available only when we start talking replication, the stamping process. That's when I, you've got to give me a, a thousand minimum. All right, so you know, I'm not sure how often you're getting to that, but that's something to keep in mind. But if until you get to that point, you saw what we could do with the thermal transfer. Give me a call on the thermal transfer too if you're considering that. If you have an option, sometimes you don't have an option. This is DC area. People already have fixed starts. They say this is how it is. Make it work. All right. So I, I mean, I know how it is. So if that's it, we'll make it work for you. But if you've got options, check with me first. Because even with thermal, whereas silk screen loves large areas of like black there, the thermal transfer will have some issues with all this black. It's hard for not to have a drop. I would call it a video dropout somewhere. All right, it's just a tough, tough thing to do. We'll make it work, but so we often have to go back to drama. Can you adjust this a little bit? Of that that's just little pointers, but this is why you give me a call, right? And of course, I have a blog about all this. And the blog is on that site that I told you about, David Ryan Media Solutions. 
So you see what's going on here, right? I got, there we go. So when they make a call to me, I'm sort of getting into the online marketing point here. When they make a call to me, I'm getting them to my blog. I've broken through being just another salesperson. That's keeping me in the game. Really, that's what's working these days for me. All right. Um, let's move on to the. Oops. Okay, we did that. Um, I could go through various samples. Why don't I move it? Move faster here. Uh, Echo friendly. If, you, if I have some clients, uh, Chesapeake Bay Foundation, et cetera, others that uh, you know they want to as much as possible take advantage of eco-friendly products. I've got one of these here. This is a popular one, made from recycled. It's just a cardboard sleeve, but it's a it's an eco-friendly option. Etc. Evaluated tape. You can't get much more eco-friendly than that. If you're doing PSAs, I don't know. It's probably, but just to give you an example, we do one pass betas that we get. Re buy them up, use them again, and you get them for a real discount price. So we do that a lot with our PSA clients. Um, I like this one, the double clamshell. That's pretty cool. All right. You can get these yourselves. But I've got all sorts of choices. And this is where you give me a call, and I try to give you the most cost effective uh, packaging and still be, you know, still get your message across. Spend your money, if, you got, if you're short on the budget, spend your money on the disk face. All right? Make a good disk face. This, I think, really sings. All right? Go, if you can afford the wrap and other packaging, but if you're short on money, go with a clear package clear packaging and spend the money on the disk face design. Um, of course, we can do more elaborate packaging. When you get to the replication, door is open as far as, um, I have it up here, don't I? I mean, look, you can get all the way up to here. We do this for discovery. I mean, you know, this ain't cheap. <laughs> but just so you know, when you get to replication, you start opening the possibilities of, of printing. Um, options. All right, so that, I went back to my, that's my elevator spe speech again, right? I work with people whose job is to get the message out. And what we do is media replication and related multimedia services. All right, it's not just copies, it's copies plus. And that's how we're surviving this craziness of the technology and the economy coming out. I hope that helps in giving you some tips as far as how we might be able to help you in some of the challenges that you're facing. What I'm gonna talk about next is move on into the online marketing. But before I do, this would be a place to answer any questions on the media replication if you want. We can also ask it later as well. But if anyone want, got a question at this point? Just curious about turnaround time on uh, Excellent. a thousand replicates. Uh, yeah. From the time I give you artwork and uh, on the uh, raw. I'll meet, I'll do my, here's the thing. Our standard is 11 to 13 days before we ship from the plant. All right. If you need it faster, I can get down to eight or nine. And, and they also may be in a slow period and they'll get it out faster. Is your plant in Rockville? The plant, the, the replication now, remember the dim standard, that's in Wisconsin. Or I also have one in North Carolina that I use. Um, my primary one that I use is in um, uh, uh, Wisconsin. I just good relationship. And uh, um, but and you don't want to do shipping on these things faster, more expedited than three day. Usually you want to do UPS ground because uh, well you probably know from your own experience. I'm telling you, once you go from three day to two day, and you can imagine the weight that's involved, just. Phew, you know, your shipping costs just really go up. So I always say to folks, three day if you have to, but go with ground um, for the most part. So you add that on to the 11 days. Generally for a thousand with a simple packaging setup, I actually can do it probably in seven to nine days. All right, if I had to. Other questions? 
Where would we find a price list? Ah, very good. We don't have a price list. All right. Because we're competing. But there are, we're competing. We don't want to necessarily give it out. That's one reason. But the real reason is there are so many variables going on that we just find that people just, it, 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 there's the quantity, the number of colors, the packaging. Uh, it just, it, it, I work on a project by project basis. Give me a call, I'll give you a quote. You can go, you know, I know you can go online and find others that will do that. Go right ahead. I mean, you know, we find that it works the best for us. Uh, there's so many variables for us that we like being able to just quote a job per job. I can give you a range, you know, and after, if you've got something in mind, come on up. But I, we prefer having you give us a call, we talk to you, and, we, and, and you know, I'm not trying, the, the days of pretending that over the phone I'm going to add value such that, oh, you're not going to look at those other folks on the internet, are you? You're not going to look at them. No, but it, that's the way that we choose to do business that way. And, and I go ahead, get that price, then come back to me with it. And then I'm going to talk you through it because there always is something else that I have found in the way that I do business with, with folks. Is it's the added value. It, it's the couple of calls. I just got a project in for a $10,000 uh, football uh, history project. And a guy just kept asking questions and questions and questions. Right? And he did his homework, but he, that's what, that was my job to do it. The point I'm making to you, I answered those questions over two weeks. And then I met, you know, I came close to the price that he had elsewhere. The point being, the online place wasn't going to let him answer all those questions. He had questions about encryption. He had questions about printing. He had questions about inserts. He had questions about everything. And he was doing his homework. But I wanted to go back and forth with him a little bit and answer his questions. Every time I was giving him pricing, but I wanted to be sure that we were doing apples to apples. And so we find the best way to work is give me a call, give me the project, I'll give you my price, but I want to answer all your questions first, and then you can go compare all the shop all you want. That, and, and we just find that it, it just if, if I just have a price list, it, it takes that dynamic out of it. You're not going to call me. No, I want to agree call. with you because I, I've just seen people mm -hmm. run into people too. All right, now that's been chipped away because of the economy. Well, what if you need it or unders is another thing. You gotta watch the fine print. In my quotes I quote for zero percent zero percent overages and guaranteed no unders. Those are important words. That means that if you're going ordering a thousand, if I didn't, the standard has been on the unders that I could go give you a hundred, a uh, thousand, eleven hundred and you'd have to pay for it. Or I could get you uh, nine hundred and say, oh, well you didn't read the clause? I could also go ten percent under. Now I'm not going to charge you, but you're there going, wait a minute, I need a thousand. That was a standard practice. That, that's going away now, but you see, you got to be real sure what's going on and read the fine print. That's why I give me a call, because I want to be sure you're comparing apples to apples. That's all. Long, long answer, but that's, that's our modus operandi. It works for us. I have one other question. Sure. I was curious about the Blu-ray encryption, how that's different than the standard DVD. And I'm sure you're going to be getting it in the next year or so, but I was, I was really curious about the high-end encryption. Uh, the, let's talk about it after the meeting because it's right in here and it's three layers. There's an excellent, uh, they go, do it well here. I've got uh, also a link to another blog that explains it uh, from our replication plan actually. The guy wrote a really good blog on what's going on in the Blu-ray replication. I mean, it's, it's, it's much more than CSS encryption. That's what's going on. And, it's, and that's why you're paying, you know, just to play they brought the fee down, but it was up until recently just every project, just to start the project for a Blu-ray replication project, you lay 3,000 down. Ouch. Yeah, just to start. <laughs> so, Very cool. license, all right. Um, anything else? You said you do closed captioning? Yep. Yeah. Everybody laughs. 
Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll ask you later, but how quickly can you turn it around? <laughs> <laughs> I, you're laughing. Why? Are you? He's asking about closed captioning. Um, I can. They're half hour spots. Come again? They're half hour spots. Half hour episodes. Yeah, 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 right, right. yeah, I mean, we, we can get that done in a uh, Do you need it in a few days? I mean, right? Yeah, typically. Yeah, well, we okay. can make that work. Yeah. All right, yes, we can do that. And also now if you're doing, I wrote a blog about, now if you now I just want to throw this out. Is, it, is this tape or is it for, we can do both if SD, we, we can do HD. HD. Don't even ask. All right, <laughs> all right. It's film produced edited in HD, put on a mini DV tape, it has to be done in, I'm doing four by three. Yeah. Um, but it has to be put on mini SD. Well, then you want line 21 closed yeah. captions. Yeah. Right, okay. Because we also do HD cam uh, yeah, they only uh, captioning. And we also do DVD captions, yeah. but that that is a whole other world. I mean, not a whole other world, but I have a whole blog. Of course, I have a blog <laughs> that, that goes over the uh, challenges of captions and subtitles for DVDs. A lot of people say, "Well, you know, can't do just no." It, it, it's a little. I have to get a file, go to an authoring process. Mm -hmm. Some recorders will do. We have a recorder that will do a line 21 DVD burn and let the line 21 info mm -hmm. pass through. Right. But most DVD encoders strip that off. So you got to go to a, what's called an SCC file. And I mean, there's my uh, jargon and you know, you guys got yours, I got mine. So, okay. all right, but, but we can make it happen for you, okay. for sure. Yeah, please do. Um, all right, shall we move on? All right. Okay, um, I'm getting to a point where I, I need to get my partner on. Oh. Well, you know, uh, let me let me get Les. Give me just one second. We need to Skype in. Taking a maybe five minute break. Is that is, would that be good? I mean, I don't want to. Yeah, am, am I doing okay with time? With time? Yeah. Do I have to? We we have till probably nine thirty. Nine thirty. Nine thirty. Max, we'll be done. Yeah. We'll make it. Why don't we take a five minute? Yeah. Is that cool? Take five. Okay. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hey, John, can I have a, a bottle of water? Oh, here it is over here. Ken, can you hand, hand me? No, I'm okay. No, I'm fine. Thanks. Uh, take a look at the screen. A little humor here. Uh, Steve, Steven, you're okay? All right. Take a look at it. I find this is marketing humor. I, I, I've written an e-book along with Leslie, who you'll meet in a few minutes. Uh, about uh, online marketing strategies. Uh, I'm, start, I'm, I'm seriously considering a second ebook on going around and making sort of like a coffee table book. Uh, I guess you might say sort of like that Jay Leno, you know, headlines in the news sort of thing he does. But go around to places where you see sort of crazy ideas of marketing. And also I would want to do one that says with good examples as well. But sort of like, so that's my, that, that, I'm, that's what I sort of have germinating in my mind as for a second ebook. But there I was up there in Philadelphia. We were going college shopping with uh, my daughter and my wife. And we walked by, and there it is. Art, again, it says Archdiocese of Philadelphia. And in the same sign, it says Catholic Cemetery's Office. And right below it, it says Nutritional Development Services. And it just kind of, you just kind of want to, as if the Catholic, I don't mean to pick on the Catholic Church, but as if they don't have enough PR issues. And look look what they did to jazz up the sign and everything. You just kind of wonder, wouldn't you have liked to have been a fly on the wall at that discussion would say, let's make a sign and let's put these two, even if they're in the same building, you'd want to do something different than that. Um, marketing, it's real important, okay? It's real important. All right, and again, I said earlier, I'll just reiterate it again. I am convinced that what I've done with the, with the online marketing that I've been developing and the strategy that I've tweaked, honed, developed, you know, I've made mistakes, et cetera. Um, what I've developed and what we've written in the ebook is really what's keeping me in the game. And I'm no different than you guys. If you really think, even though I work for a company with you know, 20 employees. Really, as a salesperson, you know, I work as with a part of a team, but let's face it, I'm out there, it's up to me. 
I got to make it work for me. All right? It's a competitive game. I work with professionals, but anyone who's in sales knows that's, that's part of the deal. So I have to make it work so I'm just, I can relate. And that's why I'm here, because even though I'm part of a larger company, I think some of the things I'm doing as an individual salesperson, you can, can, uh, you can get something from. All right, with that said, let's move on. Do you need to market? Do you need a market? Well, we, I think in this economy. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Let's. Who doesn't need to market? Who wouldn't need to market in this? All right. <laughs> Marshall doesn't need to market. But, but, but why? Do, but uh, let's think. Can someone think of an example of someone who doesn't need to market in this company? Some. The IRS. <laughs> well, maybe they need to market because they're not getting the funds that they need. Tax the revenues are down. I'll give, you an, I'll give you one example of who I think doesn't need to market. Community colleges. Community colleges in this market, the lines are out to the street, right? Because... They have been marketing to the last couple community years colleges. to expand. So, so exactly. But an enrollment in the community colleges since the downturn has increased over 20%. So they, pr the, you know, I don't want to put someone out of their job. The guys, you know, I'll get an email. What do you say? You know, you're marketing now my job. My job is marketing community colleges. No, but the point be, if theoretically, some people don't have to market, even in a bad economy, right? But let's face it, some people win the lottery too, right? I mean, it's very few of us. Most of us need to market, all right? Um, so now the question is, if you need to market, do you like to market? Do you guys like to market? Let me, if, if you don't like it, why don't you, John, like to market? I don't do it well. John says he doesn't like to market because he doesn't do it well. All right. Why, uh, why I'm else? I'm not a salesman like you. Well, no, but, 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 but hey, I wasn't either. I went through, I told you this sort of a four-year process. I sort of, uh, after I got downsized, I kind of went to the desert a little bit, got in following some online uh, advice, some folks that turned me on, and it kind of made me think. And then I got the sales position. I was doing sales before, but I wasn't doing it as well as, it, as I am now. And now I got into this position, and then I started saying, well, you know, what if I looked at some of, I'm going to talk about that in a second, but do you like to market? Ken, do you like to market? I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, I'm starting to. You're starting to. All right. I'm starting to. I'm making myself like it. You're making myself like it. OK. All right. How about you guys? I mean, I, I try, you know, I have you know, the website. I feel like my website needs some work. Yeah. I, and sometimes I feel like that might hurt me because it's not good enough. OK. Um, so do you find know. that it's something that it's easy to procrastinate? So, you yeah. know, I, I want to, I'm going to do this. I'm going it, to, it's something, I'm, it's, it's always I'm going to get to do it. All right. Well, the point, I love to market. And if you love to market, and that's the thing that you're going to, there's two things you, uh, about marketing that I'm just, and I'll just cut. It's covered in my ebook, which we'll talk about a little bit uh, later. But it's covered where I'm, the philosophy of two things in marketing. It's not about me. It's about you. All right. Let's. Let's talk about that. But what is one? And this is uh, this is from a guy, and uh, I'll just digress for a second. That I follow, named Robert Middleton, and I, I can put up a slide later from Action Plan Marketing. Uh, it, what is it? He has a, a a product called Website Toolkit, which you can buy, which helps people, you know, sole proprietors develop their inf develop an effective website. Uh, but he says. He has this big campaign about websites. What is one, when you go to a web homepage, at the top, what do you see? <coughs> about us. And that drives him crazy. I don't fully agree with him, but you can take his point. About us is at the top of every web page. And he goes, it's not about us. It's about you. It's about the person coming to the site. They're only going to give you 10 seconds. They're coming to the site. 10 seconds. And by the way, I'm just going to digress for a second. If you've got a flash intro video 
and it's the coolest video that, that you've ever done, and you've got it there that they have to watch that to get onto your site. I got news for you, 92% of the people go away. They won't even stay. And even if you put skip intro, that goes down to only about 80, then, eight, then you get the benefit of another 10% because 80% go away. They aren't even going to click skip intro. So put that video someplace else, all right? But the, Robert's point is, is that it's not, you've got to do something that grabs the viewer for their, they don't care about you at that point. For that 10 seconds, it's not about us, it's about the viewer. And the other thing about marketing that it sort of addresses what you were saying is, and Ken, you touched on a little bit. I'm making myself, it's got to be fun. You got to find a way. You got to find your way. I found my way. You got to find, and that's what I'm doing here is online marketing, even from an individual standpoint, if you can find a way to make it fun, just as much fun as, you know, turning on the tube and watching the game or something. And I am at that point where I enjoy doing the marketing. My online marketing is that much fun for me then you're going to find time to do it. I do it on Saturday mornings. So the question is how do you make it fun, all right? And make it effective, all right. I love to market, but it wasn't always so, all right? So we're going to go through a few slides here. A little history. Once upon a time, there was a new sales guy. There I am, that was from Halloween, all right? A little fable here. Once upon a time, there was a new sales guy whose company had a website, and a very nice website it was, and we do have a nice website. This is the company website, Video Labs. And if I can get the internet to go fast enough, it'll get there um, while it's churning away there. We'll go back to this. And a very nice website it was. The new sales guy's colleagues were indeed very supportive. I was the new person to the team. They've all been there several years. So I was granted access and they were very professional and very supportive, but it's kind of like, in the end, you're on your own, go get them. But the new sales guy needed to move fast and grow fast on his own. All right, so I'm in an environment. I'm with Dave, I'm with Valerie, all right? Good folks, supportive folks. But, okay, Dave, here's your desk, go get them, all right? I have to find, you know, I now got to make my livelihood going out and getting my clients. What am I going to do? Well, since I had been downsized and gone to the desert and done some research about online marketing, et cetera, I decided, you know, I'm going to try something. I would like to start my own website. The new sales guy wants to start his own blog. He wants to start his own e-newsletter and he wants to start his own social media program, all right? Now, I'm going to uh, digress for just a second. Not every CEO is progressive thinking enough to let a salesperson just go out on their own and start doing this stuff, all right? So I owe a lot of credit to our CEO, Mike Weiss, for saying to me, Dave, you know, he, he knew I was, you know, I was going to do the right thing. Uh, it was, wasn't something I was just going to go and then just leave, et cetera, et cetera. This was going to be something to complement the company, something uh, to complement with the activities of the company. It was a way for me to grow my client base. And that's what I did. This was all, this wasn't going to go after my, my colleagues' clients. This was, I was looking to make a website and a blog and an e-newsletter that was all to build my own client list. And Mike was understood, and we knew the ground rules, and he said, go get them. And so I had a lot of support. And so this is what I talk about then, this whole thing, in this ebook that Leslie and I wrote. And Leslie and I have this side company called Online Media Workshops, and Leslie will join us here in just a second. But you know, this isn't like a Silicon Valley back of, the net, uh, back of the napkin drawing, but it was from, I was at Panera, and I was showing someone, you know, my, my thought and my processes. And this was about from a year ago. And when I started putting it, I said, you know, eh, instead of redrawing it, I, I just sort of copied the sketch. 
And this is what's going on here. And this is what the ebook is all about, showing this. This is, and this is all covered in the book, but it's getting all of these things to work in sync. The website. Do you all have a website? Who, do, who, who has a website? Let's say who has a website. Okay. All right. Almost everyone has a website. If, um, the point I want to make is that I'm a firm believer that having no website is better than having a bad website. Because a bad website can do a lot more damage than nothing. A bad website, people get to, and it, it, it has a, just as a good message can become viral and spread, the, a bad message can. So if you, if you don't feel confident about your website, boy, you either make it real good or step down, take it offline, and think about it for a while. All right? But with the website, let's face it, that, as you were saying, the goal is, and let me ask you, I don't mean to put you on the spot. What's your name again? Mike. Mike. Is the website working for you? Are people coming to it? I've gotten hits on it. I've Good. Got jobs off, but not as much as I feel like I should. Like not as much as you'd like to. Okay. What I'm, and, and I, I hear you. I hear you. And what, what what I'm doing here, and this is a process that I, is to make the, all this stuff work in sync. All this online marketing stuff, instead of flailing around, people say, oh, let's do Facebook, oh, let's do LinkedIn, oh, let's do, 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 do. Let's do the blog, you know, let's do it. If you get it all working in sync, I think you will really see an exponential growth in the website traffic. It's worked for me. Yeah. And, and that's, what, that's what I cover in here. Now, I can't cover the whole process here tonight, all right? So, let me just quickly, uh, I'm going to give you an example of, of, of how this works and how I use it. I will say we have one chapter in the book that's called The Blog is the Engine. All right? And that's, that's why I have two circles around it there. You've got the website. I'm assuming that you've got a good website, right? The blog then, but, but how do you get people to your website? How are you getting people? It was, I'm sorry, Michael? Yeah. Uh, how do you get people to your website? Right, right. And you search as uh, you've touched on something that we're going to talk to Leslie about, which is search engine optimization. Are right, you familiar with the term? I mean, you've heard I've the term. Heard it, yeah. yeah, everyone's heard of SEO, that sort of thing. Okay. Leslie, with her multimedia expertise and website design, knows all about it. And in the book, she writes throughout things that, and, and says it in layperson terms, you know, some of the tech behind what's going on in website design, in social media, Web 2.0. So we sprinkle her uh, knowledge. So throughout the book, there's sections about that. And we'll get her online here in just a second. Um, but I am a believer that the blog is the engine. Because once you've got the website and the blog is part of the website, and even if it's not part of the website, the book also talks about how you can use Blogger to link in. Then what you're doing is, it's not about me, because what are you writing a blog about? Well, let's move on. Well, actually, uh, let me say, if you write the blog, then you promote the blog through Twitter, an e-zine or a newsletter, or LinkedIn, and you mail it out to your email list, people click back to the blog to read it. That drives them to the website because the blog is connected to the website. You see how you've driven people back to you. And you said something very important, Michael, you talked about the search engine. Uh, Traffic is one of the factors. By getting people to click on the blog, which is connected to the site, all right, you've just increased traffic. You've raised yourself in the Google search. If you keep doing this, I now have over 140 blogs that I've written in the past three years. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. But you see what's going on here, all right? Um, there's a whole hierarchy of search engine optimization factors. but. You can see how the blog is a way to promote. And what it also does is new content. That's big. That's huge. And that's if you can get the blog as part of your website, because then the website gets the credit for having new content. The, what, how, why Google makes all of its money is, have you heard the term the spider or the bot? Have you heard that? OK. All right. Well, I, I'll use the spider because the web and all that. The spot's why Google makes all its money, because it's 
always it's searching the whole vast internet sphere to see what's new, what's new, what site is new, what's new on your site. It wants to see it wants to see a, a vibrant site, it wants to see a multi-layered site, a complex site, shall you say. It wants to see traffic to the site. Leslie will talk about this some more, but it it also wants to see new content. It really wants to see new content. I've been told, last I heard, you know, I, I go to these seminars and the last, and it changes all the time, but last I heard they want to see content at least once every three days. New content to really consider you a viable site or a, 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 a top ranking search. This all helps you raise. And as the goal, you touched on Michael, the goal is so that when someone types in Baltimore videographers or whatever you, the term you want, that they come and that you're in that search page up near the top. That's what you want. That's the holy grail. Now I'm going to digress for just a second. The holy, I'm now taking an, also a marketing course where it's not just that's the holy grail, but the holy grail is also the email list. Okay, so that's a little bit more, but, we'll, but right now, uh, the, what, what, well, I'll go ahead and talk about it now. So you got the blog, then the e-zine or the e-newsletter, and you build your email list, all right? I now have only over 1,800 names and email addresses. Every month, I send out a simple email newsletter. Here's what's new on my site, or here's the new couple new, I, I promo the new blogs for that month. I then also put in some other information, some other, and turn it into a newsletter. And then that then goes to 1,800 people they click on it, they go to the blog, they go back to the site, you see what happens. And, and it's new content, it keeps expanding, that is what's, what's happening. That's how you promote the website. That's how you build the website, all right? And we explain this step by step in, in the book. All right, let me just go. Uh, Leslie is, uh, uh, she has her own company. We, we've known each other for, oh, uh, gosh, Leslie, uh, Leslie, you're online there? Leslie, can you hear me? Oh, no, did we lose her? I can hear you, can you hear me? Oh, we hear her, there she is. All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see you in just a second, but I'm introducing uh, Leslie and I, actually, Leslie was in 19, I think, 99, actually, we worked together at a company uh, downtown. She then went to San Francisco, got a master's degree in uh, further multimedia studies, came back east, she has her own web design and multimedia company. And uh, she helped me when I said I wanted to build a site. Uh, and I highly, re she, I'm, I'm, I'm promoing you here, Leslie. Uh, if you need help with web design, uh, this, is, this is the person to see, all right? And another great thing, uh, one of the specialties that Leslie offers is, open, is, is making it so that it's cost efficient for you, in other words, she makes it so that a lot of the functions after the site is made and through using open source uh, programming to make it so it's easy for you to get into the back door, run the site yourself and get these things and set you up templates so that you can really do it yourself and still have not just a basic simple cookie cutter thing but a powerful website that really you can run yourself. That's her specialty. Um, anyway, so uh, Leslie's there and then she helped me Again, my design, I had these ideas of it's not about following Robert Middleton's, it's not about me, it's about you. This is my website that, that I worked out with, um, you know, with Mike Weiss at Video Labs. He said, go ahead, go to town. And uh, let's see if we can get this one up here. Uh, there. There's my site. This is my home page. All right. Uh, let me. So. Over here, I have, um, what I wanted to show you is, see how the latest blog, the blog is so important to me that the latest blog, Leslie set it up so that the latest blog is always posted in the bottom right hand part of my homepage, all right? The, There we go. I just did want to. I did want to show the Video Labs website there. And look how I helped their CEO. Or their, I'm not CEO. Help, help their SEO by over here on my website here. 
If I go to graphic templates, it goes right back to video labs. So you see another how we're intertwined here? All right. Now, I wanted to talk about the blog and just show you an example tonight of how this whole process and just give you one taste of how it can work all in sync. First off, let's get Leslie on. Hi, Leslie. There you are. You're on. Hi. All right. Yeah, the connection's a little, it came in and out a little bit, but hopefully it'll stay strong. Okay, good. I'm going to do a test here, Leslie, where I'm going to post a blog onto my site and then I'm going to promote it. Because just because, guys, just because I wrote a blog, one way I said I get it out is the email, is the e-newsletter, but how about social media? All right. In the book, I talk about why I'm a big fan of Twitter and LinkedIn. I know what you're thinking, Twitter, oh my gosh. But yes, Twitter and LinkedIn, I got to tell you, for, for, for business purposes, and I know some of you have, and, you're, and I understand it. Don't get me wrong. I have three Facebook accounts. But for promoting, I'm not a big fan of Facebook and of MySpace, unless you're with a band, MySpace. But not MySpace. That's kind of devolved away. I'm not the biggest fan for an individual like in the game that we're sort of in. Unless you're a brand like Coke, Facebook for business can be a real challenge. But let me show you how I would do this. All right, so what, before I came over here, I had a blog. Let me get my, um, I beg your pardon, just one second. So this is my back door to my David Ryan Media Solutions. I wrote a, a blog over the weekend, and I do a lot of my blog writing over the weekend, all right? And, and it's always usually about what clients are asking me about is, the, is really the impetus for it. And that's how I make it fun. I sort of then listen to what I've, you know, and we had an issue with actually where we had to, you know, talk about uh, UDF, uh, the universal disk format, in relation to compatibility of a disk for a certain project plane in a whole range of players, both computer, old set-top boxes, and new. And so, in the discussion, this term came up. And so, it, I'm always learning. If you have it, if you make it fun, and that you're out wanting to learn new stuff, then you can really turn this into fun. So I just jot down questions that I get every week, every day. And then I maybe start off a blog, do a little Google research, whatever. And next thing I know, in the, in the weekend, I grab a cup of coffee, go downstairs, and finish off the blog. Here's the blog that I have for this week. All right? So it's about UDF and the role it plays when you say, my DVD won't play. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm in my back door of my website of davidryanmediasolutions.com. I'm going to publish it right now. Come on, publish. It's going. It's churning. And Leslie, tell me when it's there. Let's see. Should be. I'll get it. It's not up yet. Say again, Leslie. Get that connection. It's kind of kind of slow there because if you refresh it. Oh. Okay. You just hit F5 on your page. Say again. Just hit F5. Refresh your page. Thank you. Right. It wants to do WordPress. It's instantaneous. There it is. Thank you. We're there. We got it. Leslie, can you hear me now? Maybe not. Too many pages up. Okay. All right. So now what I do is so that is now live on my website all right I now go Leslie's made it so at the bottom of each I get a tiny URL of each blog I grab that I copy it I go to my Twitter page right so I'm on Twitter right now I, say, I notice that all, I have 187 followers, and, we get, and my, the book goes in about tw Twitter and how it's, I really think it's a unique 
It allows you to meet people and, and market to people that you wouldn't meet any other way. I've actually gotten jobs off of it because of that. All right? So um, let me just write in. So I'm going to say, I usually write my uh, promos for a blog like in a question. So what's UDF and why? I'll say why does it matter? And then I do control F. There it is. I'm going to tweet it. And there it is. And so tonight, if someone does on, and Twitter has some very powerful search potential, uh, more so than some of the other social platforms. So if someone goes in and types in their site, for some reason, just the letters UDF, they will find that tweet. And they'll get to my blog. They'll get to my site. And that's how I've gotten some of my followers are in Australia. Now, am I going to sell this to Australia? I actually got a call from someone in Australia, and it was really weird to be talking about uh, doing a disc with someone on a cell phone at the beach while they're in Australia, and they wanted a price quote on something, and I resent it to them because they had issues getting it the first time. And you can hit send from my office in Rockville, and just momentarily later, you hear ding on that side. Of the, of the email coming in. It's very, I didn't get the job, but it was very interesting nonetheless. I mean, pretty, pretty wild. Um, but you see what we did? This is just one of the things that we talk about in the book, but you see how it's all working in sync. All right? You got the website, you got the blog, you got the e newsletter, you use Twitter, and now I'm going to bring Leslie. Leslie, can you hear us still? I can hear you. OK. Leslie, can you just tell us a little bit about what the hierarchies or the important things about search engine optimization? And then what I just did, how that helps my website search engine option. Op search. Let me rephrase it. Can you tell me how what I just did helps my website's SEO? OK. so. Your placement in a search is dependent upon a lot, a lot of factors. Important, one of the most important things is, is keywords. So when you have a blog, you're creating content that is relevant to what you hope to be searched on, the terms that you want to be found on a, on a Google search. And so, you know, if you're if you happen to you know search for UDF, once that's indexed, that will show up because you posted it on Twitter, where that link exists. Um, to help drive traffic to your site is good because the more popular the site is, that helps with your SEO. So Google is going to rank a site that gets more hits more highly than a site that gets fewer hits. So just anytime there's there's a link going to your site. It's Hold on one second. Let me uh, let me so close out. You click on get to your site. That's that's great for SEO. Um, also, Twitter is good when you're. There because Google indexes Twitter. So not only um, is it indexing your actual website. Hold on a second. I'm going to close out some of these windows. Okay. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me just close a few of these windows. Okay, go ahead. You still there, Leslie? Okay. Can you hear me? Is it okay? Yeah. I'm here. Go ahead. Okay. So Google has, Google has started to index Twitter so that actual tweets are going to be found. It'll search the content of the tweets. It's not in real time yet, but within a few, and now about 15 to 30 minutes, the contents of your tweets will be able to be found. Okay. That is another way that people are going to be able to. So even if your actual website doesn't make the top page, the tweet. The tweet might make the top page. Right. right. So Twitter has such a high page on Twitter. Right. You know, bubble up to the top of the results pages. Okay. All right. Um, any questions on that? 
Does that make sense? Do you understand what's going on there? And you see why we say synchronize or sync, all right? How to use all of these social online tools to make them all work together. Again, the blog is the engine. Um, all right, Leslie, thank you. Are you freezing? Do you, okay. <laughs> all right, I'll talk to you later. Thank you, Leslie. Let me get back to the PowerPoint and wrap this up. Um, again, the blog, what to write about. All right, a lot of times I just write down what clients are asking me. And uh, then when they're on the phone, you know, what I then say, are you at your computer? And they go, yeah. And I now have 140 blogs. So I've got a blog on almost every subject that they're going to ask about. And what I do after events like this or I go to a networking event, I get someone's card, I then make a mental note or I write down on the back of the card, what did we write about or what did we talk about? I then win an email back to them. You know how it is when you go back from a networking event, you got these cards and they end up in a drawer and you don't use them. What if you then, the next couple days, you write them back and say, I enjoyed seeing you. And by the way, I know we talked about, blah, 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 uh, about uh, uh, international standards. Here's my, here's my card about how I can help you, or here's my, here's my blog about, or here's a link to my blog about standards conversion. And what you, I know you're thinking, you know, it could be something like that. Or I know you're, you might be a marketing person. I know we talked about how uh, DVDs might help you and be one way to uh, start your new marketing campaign. Here's and I can send them a, uh, a link to it. Here's a blog about some of the options you might have as far as print options, just as I showed you about the, the disk space printing and the packaging printing. I got blogs on every subject they want to talk about. I write blogs not just about the text stuff, but I also mix it up. And that's one thing that you want to learn if you're going to get into online marketing. You can't just always make it be uh, one, 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 one sided. It's got to be tech. It's got to be some humor. It's got to be some observations. So you don't want to make yourself just a one-dimensional person out there. Um, so I found that I mix it up. It's tech stuff. Uh, it's marketing stuff, some ideas, some observations about marketing, uh, some funny things, uh, something maybe totally out of the blue. If it gets too edgy, like I'm writing about something that an editorialized, and I'll sometimes do that. I'll write about, particularly if a client is having a political, and you know, I, I try not to go there. I try to maintain my political independence. But if there's an issue that I really am in sync with, and I feel like, you know, it, I'm in tandem with a particular client about, I'll go to my personal blog that I have, Blogger, and write something about it, and then link that maybe, you know, link that to my site but making sure that it's known that it's a personal. I, I, I think that's the way to make it fun. Some people say you shouldn't go there. You got to make sure, and especially, what am I doing? You know, committing suicide as a salesperson. It's okay, I think, if, if, you, if, you t if, you, if you're being true, uh, and it's a way of making it interesting and fun. I take that risk. You have to make your own decisions. It's sometimes okay to step out outside the safe realm and to write a blog about a topic that you feel passionate about. It's okay. You, maybe it needs to go into Blogger, but it's okay to have that out there. Um, it's a great way to promo clients. If you want to add a value to a deal of clients and it's a deal breaker and then you're tied and you say, listen, I'll do this also. If you take the job with me, I'll promo you in my next e-newsletter. My e-newsletter goes out to 1,800 people. Guess who's going to get the job? I've gotten jobs that way. And I feature them in their link, and then I make a blog about them. And then I ask in return that they link that blog and post it on their site. And what did Leslie just say? One of the factors is, is the linkage that helps in search engine optimization. Look how it's, we've both won there. I got the job. They got the promotion. They've helped me with SEO. It just keeps building. All right? I th and so you see how it all works? All right.
This, uh, Leslie and I have uh, 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 an online media workshops uh, site. Uh, I, I'm just going to go through these real fast. Not only I showed you on Twitter, but in LinkedIn. Remember LinkedIn, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a resume site, you know, and that's, it can be that bland. You just put up your resume and it's there online, but, and it's just going to sit there. This can also drive, notice that it was included in the, uh, in the diagram, because when you tweet, now this is not live, this is, but when you tweet, the arrows there, see, one of the arrows, every, I've got it so that when I tweet, it appears on my LinkedIn page. And when I post a new blog, if you went to my LinkedIn page right now, the blog we just posted would be on my LinkedIn page as well. Makes my LinkedIn page more vibrant, all right? It's not just a resume. So, if you, uh, so now let me just, you know, uh, I'm going to offer a discount on the book and I'll finish this up, you know, uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to have some door prizes for Video Lab stuff and some other things. But if the ebook is available, uh, at onlinemediaworkshops.com. Uh, also in, covered in the book, we just talked about a little sliver of, uh, we just gave you one example of it, uh, why you need to market online and how to start. Again, we covered some of that, but I go to it more in depth. What's an effective website? I go into that m really in depth. Uh, and also then direct you to go to uh, Robert Middleton's website toolkit. But again, if you got a, uh, no website's better than a bad website. Uh, how, to so, oops, how to select a website designer. Uh, Leslie's the best I've worked with. There's many other qualified people out there, obviously. Uh, also, if you don't have a website, people ask, well, I don't have a website. And, and the economy, you know, that maybe this is not the time to invest money into making a website. Uh, I understand that. I talk about how you, can, how you can do this by using just LinkedIn and blogs. You can make it work. Uh, I keep clicking that, sorry. The importance of building your email list. I'm, as I said, I'm talking, taking a course now where, the, where everyone thinks that getting the person to the site is the holy grail. I, I'm now listening to some folks that are saying that the, actually the email list, not for spam purposes, but it's the email list that's the holy grail. I, you know, I'm not sure, but uh, interesting. The role of a news newsletter, I, I talked about that. I, I do a e newsletter uh, about once a month. Um, Leslie gives you more. Now, Web 2.0, this, it's important for you to know. You don't have to know all the tech stuff, but it's important for you to know enough so you can be conversant about it. Web 2.0, and Leslie gives you some background about what, why Web 2.0 makes this all work and why now we, this whole uh, social media is available to us. Uh, more on social media. I talked and I explained more about why I'm not a fan of Facebook necessarily. Now I know that I have three Facebook pages and I've seen some of your all's Facebook pages and, and I understand it works for you. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll write a different blog and then come up with a different idea. I'm still learning. All right, this is still an evolving process. I know Steven's Facebook page is very effective for me. He's, and I went to it and I saw he's got a lot of people following. So, I understand, and maybe that's where your crowd is, and I maybe, but for most of my experience, my Facebook page and others that I see, unless you're Coke, unless you're Hardee's, unless you're NASCAR, unless you're something like that, having a Facebook page for your business isn't going to do it because you can't go out. The critical thing is they don't let you go out and friend people like you do on your personal accounts, and you don't want to do your business stuff on your personal account because, man, you do not want to get your messages out there mixed in with your nephew who is telling about the, the party that he had last weekend, all right? You don't want to have your message mixed in with that. I would stay away from that. So that's the challenge with Facebook on that. But uh, about mixing things up, avoiding pitfalls, and again, getting it all working together. And the critical question at the end, the ROI, all right? You're going to ask me, does the, you know, all right, Dave, we'll the money. Well, I think I've given you an idea. Can I put a dollar amount on it? No, I really can't. But can I tell you that I've gotten referrals from it and some of the examples that I've told you? I can't tell you how many times people have called me and said, I've been looking at your blog. I received that e-newsletter. Some of you know that I get my e-newsletter. I have a cat, a discount cat, and that's a whole other story. Um, you make it fun. That's how I make it fun. Uh, it's working. I can also go in and look at the traffic. 
I know that when I send out an e-newsletter within 48 hours, the calls that come in, there is a definite correlation. If I'm having a slow patch and I send out an e-newsletter, I can tell you 48 hours, within 48 hours, I'm getting a lot more calls. And you know what the calls basically say? I've been meaning to call you about. And what got them to call me? The e-newsletter. All right? So I really think it's something you should look into if you're not doing that. I'm going to wrap it up here. I've appreciated your patience. Let's do the door price. We've got a number of things. Um, let's do the Video Labs door price first. Um, we've got two things here. 50 free. Remember we talked about duplicated. Difference between duplicated and replicated disk. So I've got two prizes here. One for 50 free duplicated DVDs in either clamshell cases like this, you know, circular or square clamshell cases like this. All right. You can get, call me up and, the, uh, and give me your order. And you can apply it to a larger order if you'd like. All right. And then we've got a second prize for 25. So I'm going to do this. What do you think is a fair way of doing that? Do I have the lady pick? Yeah. <laughs> That's you. Mix them up. It's, does everyone have their card in, right? Everybody card, everybody card in? This will be for the 50. Take the box, you know. <laughs> 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 Not that one. Steven. <laughs> me? Yeah, Steven Graydon. You got the five, they all are off. You get the 50. Could have used it a couple months ago. There you go. Congratulations. I'll bring it to the lens. Uh, I was trying there you to go. just one card. That's what I'm there you go, sir. Thank you very much. All righty. Very nice. My pleasure. Like All right, let's do another one for 25 free duplicated DVDs. <laughs> Ken will do it. Just pick mine. Just pick mine. Can you get it? Oh, yeah. I'm back on. Don't pick it on. Right? <laughs> no, no. Pick on it's glossy on one side. There he goes. Abby. Hey. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Certificate for 25 free duplicated DVDs in clamshell or polypack cases. Congratulations. Well, good. All right. All right. Thank you. Anyone that's been here tonight, uh, just tell me. Give me a call. For, six, for 30 days, I'll take 10% off. All right. Uh, just tell me, and I'll, I'll quote your price, and then say, oh, I was at the 10% we'll take that off. All right, that's for duplication. All right, I can't do it for replication. Replication, the margins are... Do you? All right, All right there you go. Okay. All right, so 10% off. And finally, for the ebook, I'm going to give you uh, my... I gave you business cards for the video labs. I'm going to give you the online media workshop. So if you want the ebook, it's usually $19.95. If there is a discount code, if you go to the site and buy the book, you just type in the letters BVA in the discount code, <laughs> and you guys will get $5 off, and it's a downloadable book, and you go right to town with it. And then it also allows you, to, we're going to have an upcoming Twitter, I'm going to talk more about Twitter workshop, which if you buy the book, you get to go free to the, you get to join the, the or to um, view the uh, workshop that I'm going to have on Twitter. Did you hand out your business card? I did. Oh, I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Yeah, did you get book Great. Play, and what was your name again? Jim. Jim. And, and uh, what's, what's your company? Uh, Red Kite Productions. Okay. By the way, um, when she does the site now. How does she, what kind of software she use where you can get in and update your own website? Ah, she's using uh, WordPress. She's, uh, she, she's doing um, a lot of, she is the queen, if I may say so, of open source software. So I, I don't know all the stuff. She would design the site, but you're still able to come in and change things. For absolutely, those. absolutely. In fact, that's why she keeps the cost down. My site, I've had the site now for about, uh, three years. 
And the total outlay over three years that I've done, plus her development. Now, of course, she was a friend and all that. But she gave me some of it, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's the great thing about Leslie's. He, like, I do these blogs myself. I, I don't need her to do the blog. She makes it so it's, it's all. I use WordPress, but no, it's what she chose for me. But uh, uh, no, you, uh, yes, yes, Word, WordPress is yes, but uh, that she's using. So PHP list. Now you can use Constant Contact and all the, you know, and there's and there are some more bells and whistles that you get for that, but you pay for that. So if you're like me, watching every cent, and and again, you know, I'm, I was doing this as a in addition to my normal, or not my normal, but my regular, already this company has its site, et cetera. So I was doing it as an ancillary. I, could, I wasn't going to, I didn't have a lot of money. Let's put it, I'm boiling down to what I'm saying. Leslie helped me set it up with open source, particularly the e-newsletter, PHP list. She now has another, so it doesn't matter where she is. It doesn't matter. We, 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 we talk all the time by Skype or the phone. It doesn't matter. All right, it was a pleasure meeting you. All right, good, good. and give me a call. All right, let me know. All right, All right good. All right, hey, good. Right, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good. All right. So what do you guys shoot? A lot of weddings, it's close, three events. Okay. A lot of big clients like that. Five days, you have to be from work, by school. Good for you. Are you with him? He's out in L.A. Yeah, I'm just busy. Or what are you doing in L.A.?